Hi, welcome to the training. Yes, proactive marketing and sales blueprint training. It is a workshop, so I am going to, you know, take away the academic and the informal part of, or rather formal part of it. I'm going to be very stressed. I can give you action points that within the next one hour or two hours, or one or 30 minutes, you get everything. Don't want it to be long so that you can take your action um, nuggets and go and apply them. Remember, at the end, I'm going to show you Dr. Kali Cousins' uh, secret code for marketing. Being disabled in his lower limbs, how does he sit one place and get contracts and get you know, clients and customers, how does he do it? You're gonna see that, yes. So I'm going to put off the video so that we can face the meat of the training. So allow me to do that. Good. Now, proactive marketing and sales blueprint training. My name is Kali Cousins. My job, I love turning your ideas into results. That's what I love most. And I want to ask you, what do you love doing? If you want to, if you want to introduce yourself, what will you say? In four letters, in five letters, what will you say you love doing? What describes you? So I love turning your ideas into results. I love doing business and I love teaching business. I'm a trainer, I'm a consultant, I'm a speaker, I'm author and a mentor. Yes, you can connect with me online, Kali Cousins or Dr. Kali Cousins on all social media handles. The objective of this particular training, proactive marketing and sales delivery training, is to expose participants to practical marketing principles and how to apply them in your enterprises, in your career, in your personal life, in your family, in your businesses. Yes? So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to find out who your customers are, what they need and want, how to satisfy their need, how to make a profit, from the transaction and how to sustain the profit relationship. Remember, time will me to go and start say, oh, there's a difference between need and there's a difference uh, between need and warrant and all this. I don't want any academic thing to creep in here today. So our outline will look like this. What are marketing and sales? Can we differentiate them? What is proactive marketing and sales? Street smart marketing and sales strategies the CCDVTP marketing algorithm and how you can apply it in your career, in your business, how to design practical marketing and sales strategy. Yes, we will look at understanding and apply marketing and sales funnel. We, we also work on application of the seven piece of marketing in your business and career, understanding the understanding and applying 21st century marketing and sales channels, understanding the concept of customer satisfaction and the bonus I promised you. And the bonus is Dr. Kali Cousins Secret Marketing and Sales Blueprint. As you can see, the program is overloaded, overloaded for the pricing, for the timing, overloaded. So you're gonna get so much value so much value that you're going to be so, so proactive in your marketing. So what is marketing? To avoid academic rigmaroles, I'm gonna talk about marketing and then I talk about sales and we're gonna look at them almost at the same thing, but we're gonna find some little distinctions that will help us to do what? So know when we are doing marketing and when we are doing sales. Now, because it's very important for me now, don't look at your textbooks. Don't look at your sales books. Some things we are meant to be used to pass exams and some things are meant to be used in everyday life where you where action is actually needed. So marketing is everything you do 
to find out who and where your customers are and how they want what they want. The it, you must find out what it is and how they want that it to be solved for them. Marketing has to do with everything you do to find out what they consider their best interest. What do they consider their YF and what's in it for me? What is in it for them? What do they feel it is the right thing for them to receive from your offer? Not just what you think. Remember, you don't matter as much as your customer. Your customer matters so much. So what do they consider their best interest? How can you gain their patronage and how can you ensure continuous patronage with a view to making profit in the relationship? Okay, so now what is sales, okay? Sales is um, when you've marketed and people want your product, and I'm gonna give you a simple example. They won't sit on the, on the, on, on your talk or on the signpost or where you were mentioned, they need to actually go and get it, okay? So they need to swipe their card, they need to go to the mall, they need to come to your office, they need to go online and get it. Now you can market and people want your product. If your product is not available, for people to exchange their money and collect your product, you are only marketing, you are not selling. A very simple example. So if you are watching football on television and you see a particular product, maybe drinks, oh, they mentioned the name, oh, uh, Kali soft drink, oh, Cousins uh, soft drink, whatever that is. And you, after they've done it two, three, four times, you want it, you just want, to have it. Remember, you cannot put your hand inside the world, the television, to pick it up. You need to do what? You need to go out there to find it. So what they've done that place that product where you can see it and trust it and know it and like it is what they, we call marketing. But for you to buy it, you need to have access to it. So you go out there, to go to the mall, to go to the shop, to go to the store, to buy it. If you can't find it there, most times you don't come out from the shop without buying something. So if it's a drink, you look for the alternative and pick. Yes? So if it's, if it's Coca-Cola, you may buy Pepsi-Cola. If it's Pepsi-Cola, you may buy Coca-Cola. What that means is that you can sell, or rather, you can market without selling. But for you to sell without marketing is always a difficult thing. So make sure that as you are marketing, you are selling and make sure that you don't sit one place wanting to sell without marketing. Now, I know what is ringing in your head. What is advertising? What is PR? You know, what is um, branding? And then you are thinking of, uh, you know, the term marketing communications. That is not what we want to do here today. We want to take marketing and sales from this perspective, and I do hope it suffices. But we are talking a little about something deeper, proactive marketing. Like you already know, proactive means that you are at the forefront. Proactive means you are not passive. Proactive means you are assertive. You go out there to do your thing. So proactive marketing is deliberately researching and analyzing the information about your customers and using the result to create an effective marketing plan that anticipates change and makes changes before the change occurs. Proactive marketing is deliberately researching and analyzing the information about your customers and using the result to create an effective marketing um, plan that anticipates change and makes changes before the change occurs. Now, when we talk about proactive marketing, we're saying 
that it is a marketing based on research, is a marketing based on deliberateness, is a marketing based on intentionality. It's not just you wake up, you don't plan, and then you just go into the market and start doing your thing. When we talk about research, let me give you an example. There are at least four things you should know or areas you should know about your customer or consumer. One of them is the geographics. Where are they? If you don't know where your customers are, you just keep going around talking to people who may never buy from you. So where are they? Are they in the markets? Are they in the mall? Are they online? Are they offline? Are they on both? Are they in the ministries, departments, and agencies? Are they directors? Are they permanent secretaries? Are they ministers? Are they governors? Are they SSA to governors, SSA to governors and president? Are, who are they in terms of where are they? So when you find out where are they, where they are, but remember, you should have been able to find their demographics before you even find where they are. In talking about their demographics, we are talking about are they male, are they female, so their gender, are they educated, are they uneducated? You have to create the avatar, that person that will buy from you. Who is he? Who is she? What religion is she practicing? Is he practicing? What is his income? What is academic level? You must find this out. We call it demographics. So when you found the demographics, now you use it to find the geographics, where they are. If you are producing for students, where are they? They are in schools, nursery school, crèche, primary schools, secondary schools, polytechnics, monotechnics, college of education, universities, you know, they're in schools. Okay, so you must know where they are. Are they online? Even online, are they more on Instagram? Are they more on Facebook? Are they more on YouTube? Do they use more of Snapchat? Are they on TikTok? You must also know that, yes? If you've got that, you found their demographics, you found their um, geographics, then you need to find they are psychographics. I'm not going to waste so much time on some of us because I don't want to go academic. Psychographics has to do with how do they think? How do they think? When you see rich people, they think in form of quality. They think quality, quality, quality. They're not thinking quantity. But you see, the poor person is thinking what? Quantity, quantity, quantity. In fact, if you take a bottle of drink and you pour more water inside it and maybe add one or two cubes of sugar, now he or she can buy. But if you bring it the way it is, you say this small thing is what they're selling to me for such a certain amount, I will not buy. So you must know how they think. You must think promotion. You must, or rather, I mean discount. Like Black Friday, this one, that one. Sometimes <laughs> you go to shops and you find out the amount that they were selling it before the promo is the amount that they're still selling it, only that they wrote a bigger amount and cancel it. And what happens? People think that the price is down. So in the book, The Sense of Getting Rich, the author says something that I want to be of interest to you. He said that when you are selling anything, exchanging anything, give people more in value than they gave you in cash. So if it's a poor person, know what he thinks is value. If it's a rich person, know what he thinks is value. If it's an, a very well-read person, academically sound, know what he thinks is value. If it is an illiterate, know what he thinks is, is value. If he's a politician, know what he thinks is valid. In fact, if you are selling something to a politician in our club, no matter how good it is, 
if he, you can't connect it to how he can win the next election, he's most likely going to reject the proposal. So you've got to understand those and make sure that you do that. So if you've got this, we just talked about psychographics. So we talked about um, demographics, we talked about geographics, we talked about psychographics. And then we look at behavioristics. How do people actually behave in worse circumstances? Okay, I'll give you a very simple example. Last year, we have to open Dexter Rosie Agritech Company that is into agriculture and its value chain production of rice. We produce the Dexter Rosie rice and all those. Why? Because we know the country was going into recession after the pandemic. So we decided that being a consulting firm, yes, governments will always say consulting is not our, you know, most important need at the moment. Individuals will say consulting and training are not our most important needs. So, but we find in our, in, in our climb, almost every family eats rice. So we established a rice company because behavior will go that way. And I tell you, it made us not to feel or even to know that there was recession because the income from the agri-tech and rice company, yes, made us not know when the recession you know, came and passed. So you must understand the behavioristics, yeah? People have to behave in particular circumstances. During January, yes, a lot of people want training, a lot of people want to do more, and things go high during that time. If you go to Google Train, you see people are searching training on how to do this or how to do that, training on how to um, lose weight and all those. But you really get to March, yes, that goal setting of January goes down and people do what? Go back to their former ways. So ability to do everything you do in your marketing from the perspective of research is what we are emphasizing here. That's all. So let's look at street marketing and sales strategy. Just marketing 101. Why do we why do we call it street marketing and sales strategy? We say that in marketing, don't just be romantic about it. Just understand that what you have, people need it outside there. How can you take what you have to them? What they need outside there, you can produce. How can you produce and make them know you produce it and exchange their monies for your product? That's why we say, don't be sexy and romantic about it. Yes, it is as simple as marketing 101. How do I sell what I have? So first of all, customer need identification. Customer need identification. In understanding customer needs identification, you need to find out what is the hot topic out there. What are people looking for? What is disturbing them at the moment? What pains do they have? And they're looking for gains and solutions for the pains they have. Ability to identify, ability to identify customers' needs will put you way ahead of your work, your competitors. Understanding your competitors, we're going to talk about that, is one of the most important thing you need to do because your competitors will demand, or will rather will determine your competitors, who they are, will determine your pricing, will determine your value proposition, will determine where you go to because you're going to go to where you're going to get the market share, will determine how much of the market size you can get and in which market or in which target area, your competitors will determine that. So a competitive analysis or competitors analysis is a very important, a very important quality skill you should have in your organization. So you have to identify customers' needs. And how do you do that? 
you look around, I'm going to discuss this a little more, but you look around and find out what is shifting in the society. What, what is trend trying to do to your market? Most times people don't understand trend. For instance, in training, a lot of people are looking for what? Self-paced because people are so busy. And because of the last pandemic, people are always very busy with their companies work, with their businesses, with their engagements. So they want to listen or take the training at the time they want it. And because of the power and penetration of virtual training softwares like Zoom, like Team, like WebEx, people now know that giving them the recorded version is as good as what? As them sitting down here to listen. So identify customers by finding what is shifting in your industry. What do people really want in your industry at the moment? People want to buy and you use logistic companies to get it across to them. They don't, they want to buy online. Most of them don't want to come to your shop anymore. They don't want payment pattern that is very difficult. Oh, come go to the bank and raise check out. People don't want that again and raise the draft before you can pay. In fact, I wanted to buy something, mm, I think property or so, and they're telling me to go and raise draft. And it was so, so, um, so, so bizarre for me because when was the last time I even had the word draft apart from, uh, you know, drafting uh, an email or draft inbox in the draft um, inbox inside the email. I, have, I think I've not had that word again. Draft. And when you finish typing and you, you want to put up the computer and say, we have a draft, you want to save it, okay? So customer, you must find what they need at the moment, identify it. Now, look at it. You don't matter in this equation. You are not a factor in this equation. What they want, as far as it's not illegal, as far as it's not immoral, according to your own standard, as far as it's not against anything you hold there, or the country holds there, you know, make sure you do it according to their need, not according to how you want it. The next thing is providing what they need. You must understand to, how to provide what they need, how they need it. It is not about you. What do they need and how do they need it? You must, what is the Substance, the products, the service, the platform, how is the process? We're going to talk about the seven P's so you can see how it integrates. Providing what they need, how they need it, when they need it, where they need it, is your job. The next thing is certain prices that they are willing and able to pay. Prices they are willing to pay and able to pay. Now, somebody may be willing to pay a price, but not able to pay the price. If he's willing to pay a price and not able, the person is poor. If the person is able and not willing, the person may be rich, but it doesn't find value in what you are you know, selling. So that's why we're going to talk about how to actually target the only people that will really make sense because you cannot, and I wish you write it down, you cannot serve everybody. Very important to note, you cannot serve everybody. The next thing in street smart marketing, in street smart marketing and sales strategies, yes, is getting your products or services to the people who want this product and who want this service. Getting it across to them is so, 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 so important that a lot of people who are so poor today, it is not, and a lot of businesses that are so poor today do not have cash flow. It's not because they don't have good products, but they are not 
taking their products or services to the people where they are. And that is why if you are taking this course right now, you know, I need to uh, salute you because that's wonderful, okay? So getting your products or services to them is very important. How do you do that? Yes, we've talked about how to know who they are, where they are, when they want it, and then making sure that you put all the triggers that will make them know that you do that and put all the triggers that will make them know that buying from you is better than buying from any organization. It's very important to point out here that, yes, it is not about being aggressive because some people say, oh, you shouldn't be aggressive. People don't like it. It's not about being aggressive or being shameless, but it's all about making sure that people know what you do. Marketing is not just about being pushful. Marketing is about love and service. A lot of people don't like marketing. They don't like selling. They don't like telling people about what they have. And I say, for instance, let's assume you have a gospel that will take somebody to heaven, whatever that heaven means to you. And you don't tell the person about this heaven. Have you done something good to this person? The same way you have a product that can cure cataract. I am disabled in my lower limbs, a, a product that if I rub it on my legs or take it or whatever, I can stand up and walk around and it's proven scientifically, not something, um, one concussion somewhere. Yes, and then you don't tell me about that. You're not doing me good. You need to give, give me good service. You need to love me by bringing that product to me. So getting your product or services across to your customers is your job. Then informing and attracting them to buy your product or services is your job. Sometimes, according to, um, okay, borrowing from Socrates, Socrates would say, people do, yes? People do the wrong because they do not know the right. People do the wrong because they do not know the right. A lot of people are languishing, perishing, depressed, and um, getting low, getting, you know, the other part of the stick that they don't deserve because you've not gone out there with your product for them to know that you can solve your, their problems, okay? So my mentorship program is 10,000 US dollars and I've been able to mentor people to super sources who had you know, gotten that money within that mentorship, you know, 15 times, 20 times and more. Now, if you don't, if I don't tell them about my mentorship and give them the right to first, to, yeah, the, the right of first refusal, yes, I'm not doing them good. So informing and attracting them to buy your product or services, it's your job. So educating people, about your product and what it can do. Maybe showing them through free demonstration. Sometimes giving sample if the cost is within marketing budget, allowing them to use and then upgrade if it's a software. Those are possible ways to inform, educate and attract them to buy your product, okay? So let's go to the next topic. CCD, VTP, marketing algorithm and is marketing algorithm and is application. So that will be the next video.